Hi folks, it's Andrea. You can find me at andreabelliniart.com. Um, and now I'm starting this YouTube channel, which is really exciting. Um, I'm starting the channel because I just want to share some profundities and curiosities um, that I thought that we would enjoy that are involving the mind, body, and heart connection. And um, the other deeper reason is because um, when you live through your heart, it requires kinship. And I didn't think that I could find um, as much support through my online communities as I have. And when I gave it a chance, I realized that it was a really big part of my encouragement and a really big part of following my path. So um, throughout, throughout history, humans have shown that they need daily and weekly and seasonal festivities and poetry and different encouragements. So um, why not give it to each other? in different shapes and forms. It definitely has made some of the solo work that's required, you know, sometimes when you have to do some writing or um, projects that require a lot of more introspective work or you're working a bridge job um, and you're trying to stay motivated. Those are all important times to really tap into some other resources. So I hope that some of the things that I continue to share um, can be of help and um, support your path. So that being said, welcome. Um, I had to ask myself, where do I start? And um, I figured I would just start exactly where I am in order to pretty much just model what I feel like um, I teach. So um, I have a hurt knee and that's part of why I'm sitting because normally I like to stand and dance through everything I do. But um, I have a hurt knee. And so of course the first question is, what happened naturally, of course. And um, I don't know. And that is what I've been saying is I don't know because there was not like some big specific tragic moment or injury. Um, I wasn't doing anything adventurous. And um, so everyone looks at me kind of with, a, you know, suspicious or they're like, that's lame. Like you don't even know. And you can't stand on your knee. Well, I realized that that is kind of not quite accurate. Um, I ignored the early signs of what was hurting my knee. So um, I had pain and I had tenderness and I just kept going. And then it kept bothering me and I kept going anyway. And I tromped around with a heavy backpack and um, I lived my life on my feet. So I just kept going. I didn't bother to rest. And eventually my knee became very swollen. Um, it was throbbing. I couldn't bend it and I couldn't walk on it and couldn't function basically. So the real answer to what happened is um, I ignored my body's messages. I ignored my knee. So then my knee screamed at me until I would listen and I couldn't do anything else. So um, what did I do next? Well, I cried a lot and I felt sorry for myself and I th threw a little dash of panic in there too. Um, step two can sometimes be blaming, blaming somebody else, but instead I, I went ahead and panicked. Um, and the tears came. And then after the tears came, then I felt a little bit better, so I tried to walk on it some more, tried to work on it. And thought that I could overpower the pain with my mind. So we all know that this does not work. And um, then I finally became still and at rest. And I remembered that I needed to let all of the healthy parts of my body teach the injury. And then only from that more grounded place could I really examine what was going on for me and really take a look at my choices and my limitations and make some solid decisions from this grounded place. So I share this with you because that's there's a lot of uh, parallel learning here in my emotional life. And the injury reminded me of how much I struggle with any kind of limitation. In fact, even in my yoga practice, I hate binds. I hate asana that involves binds. And those are just temporary self-inflicted asanas um, that you know you won't be in for you know more than a few minutes. And I still have a lot of stuff that comes up for me. And when I started talking about this with some others, it seemed to really resonate. So I figured this was a great place to share. 
Um, I know that it's in my family's emotional inheritance to rebel against restriction. I also know that it's a cultural privilege uh, to expect to have many options. It's cultural and colonial to try and dominate your way out of a restriction. So I had all these immediate reactions on so many different levels. And that can be really confusing and frustrating. And one of the reasons why is because I see myself as brave, right? I see myself as brave. I've been told I'm strong and courageous. I've done things in my life that have required a fair amount of bravery in comparison to some. But there's areas in my life where I'm not brave. And instead of comparing myself to others, I needed to compare myself to myself, which is really the only worthy comparison. And then I could see the areas where I sink into my pain and sometimes sink into it in a way that's so dangerous for my well-being and I cover up the strong parts or I use the strong parts as a mask. I wonder if you can relate to this. I needed to stop identifying myself as a brave person despite my pain and vulnerability and to really see the areas where I needed more bravery in the face of pain and vulnerability, where I needed more resources, where I needed more resourcing. I couldn't let bravery be some umbrella or some identification. It's more complex than that. I need to allow all the healthy parts, the strong parts, the brave parts, teach the insecure and afraid parts because they're there also. So that leads me back home. We have to start where we are but you need to know where you are. And I was all over the map. And if we're all over the map and we're panicking, then no one can find us and we can't even locate ourselves. We chase our tail. It's like the Marauder's map in Harry Potter. I always visualize like, where am I gonna pop up next? But it's a surprise, it's not a sure thing. So um, I realize like being grounded doesn't mean you have it all figured out. You know, we throw this word around, especially in the yoga community, about being grounded. But it doesn't mean that you have it all figured out. It kind of means that you're preparing yourself to figure it out and you're starting to engage in deeper awareness. It's more of a first step to locate yourself and then make decisions. If we don't do it that way, then we're just trying to skip steps and we're not really starting where we are. So another example would be that when I teach children, I can't go from a screaming, excited room to a meditation state. My relationship between internal and external systems in my life is no different. I need to meet myself where I am in order to go someplace new. I have to direct myself, guide myself to the next step. I can use music, I can use movement, I can use poetry, I can use something that um, is more energized and then transitions me to a slower music and then finally maybe silence. Or if I need to feel motivated, um, I can start with something more gentle and build up to high energy. It's less jarring on our system, it's more honest, it's more aware, and it creates a flow. It creates a flow instead of a ladder. So I like to um, visualize more of a river rather than steps or a ladder or a mountain. And then that way, the illusion that you're, you know, trying to leap certain steps, you're trying to push yourself up. No, you're just, you're trying to flow because it's not just all bravery and all fear. It's a dance with the two. So that leads me to some of the cliche things that get said about beginnings, about starting before you're ready. I hear that a lot. Um, I hear that a lot in entrepreneurial conversations. Um, and we can locate a lot of ex excuses and external factors in order to stop ourselves from implementing a new goal or a new habit or starting a new project. So for example, I wanted a haircut, whiter teeth, and you know, maybe a new shirt before I made this video. And I wanted my knee to be better. 
So, okay, I acknowledge that these things were things that I wanted um, and they were bombarding me for a moment. And I didn't shove them away because I was like, well, I'm not a pretentious person and these things don't matter. No, they were coming up. So clearly they had some meaning for me. So when I dug a little deeper, I was like, yeah, I want to feel fresh. And there's no shame with that, right? That's nice. You feel good. You know, you get your vibe going. But I also, you know, did want those things because I was comparing myself to others and not wanting to have some kind of judgment thrown at me. So I was trying to guard myself in a celebrity driven culture. So then I did a little bit more gentle nudging and a little bit deeper questioning about my intentions. Um, and that revealed that I was making this video because I value connection and kinship. And I have received so much from other people's videos and other people's resource sharing. So as soon as I could get through all of those things, I could cultivate some gratitude and courage to start exactly where I am. I heart stormed about how to give you better production value, but then that would be skipping a step and that would be some ego stuff coming in. I'm here, I'm right here with my phone in my studio apartment recording something to have community with you. So I'm starting before I'm ready, but I'm prepared, I'm grounded, and I'm being honest about where I am. I can't let external factors of my life that I don't even have control over th make my value set shift. My value set is clear and it's to connect with you. Often we're just letting everyone um, who ever rejected us enter the room when we're our most vulnerable. So that's when we know that we need to get grounded and then ask more questions rather than making more statements. What I like to say is that I put my energetic spanks on, right? I don't wanna feel energetically flabby when I make decisions or when I step out the door for that matter, or especially when I connect with you. I can feel unsure and unresolved around something, but still feel solid also. That's letting the strength inform the insecurity or the unsure parts. Just the way I let the rest of my body inform my knee, how we were gonna handle the injury. Often I've decided to clean the house in order to prepare for some new emotional, physical, or financial task. And then I'm really tired and I tell myself, well, at least the house is clean. And then I binge on a TV show and I go to sleep and I wake up and my cycle is perpetuated if I haven't started this new project that I have on my desk or even in just in my heart. Don't get me wrong. Cleaning can be meditative. Um, it's beautiful sometimes to wash the dishes. Um, it can be really like a nice mindful thing to declutter a drawer but it can also be something that's just an excuse to feel accomplished because we know that starting a new task won't make us necessarily feel that way immediately. So there's this feeling of completion that we're looking for, which means that we're just not okay with some new level of vulnerability. So sometimes our first step is risky. It's a little wobbly. It's a little messy and we're just attempting to have more control by putting these other activities ahead of starting it. But whether it's emotional, financial, physical, spiritual, your first step is just that. It's just a first step. It may very well be your clumsiest, maybe not, but likely. And it's always easier to modify something that's already in existence or to judge something already in existence than to get the ball rolling on something that's already in flow. Because once the ball's already in flow, then you can get into this place where you're less mindful about the activities. And so that brings a whole different set of work. The work of beginnings is very different. To get something going from scratch can be much harder. We often despise the vulnerability that comes with it. And our society has supported the polished versions of everything as ideal. 
We have to love the vulnerability to love the beginning. Why can we appreciate the pictures or the videos of a child's first steps and somehow want to skip right past our own? We were all born with beautiful capacity to take first steps in different aspects in our lives. And we can love and cherish those beginnings if we're not constantly comparing the past and future versions that we have in our minds or comparing ourselves to others. Feeling shaky is normal. Feeling foolish is normal. And being excited and nervous is normal. All of those things can coexist with your strength, your resources, instead of dominating them. I put a blank canvas behind me today. Um, it can be really intimidating. It can be one of the most intimidating things that I encounter. But it's really just an illusion. It's not really blank. It's waiting for my mark, and I'm full of ways to express. So it's just a new relationship with vulnerability and that there's more unknowns in the beginning. We're always in flow, and if we're breathing, we're definitely flowing, and there's so much circulating inside us. Deciding what your first mark is gonna be can be scary, but it can also be really beautiful from a very grounded place. And once you do it, then you have something to work with and something to dance with. So, I appreciate you being here. I wanna hear about your new beginnings. I wanna hear about what you do to get yourself motivated to take first steps. I wanna hear some of your horror stories and let's try to figure out um, how to laugh at them. Um, maybe cry with them first. But, you know, I'd love to hear from you about this topic. So I'm gonna to close today um, with you by taking three breaths through the heart as we follow our first steps on our heart path. We're gonna to choose to put our hands on our heart, I invite you. And we're gonna to choose to breathe deep and slow I like to picture the whale's breath, very deep and expansive. There is something that um, is very engulfing about thinking about the whale's breath for me. So I envision that often. I like to close my eyes and I invite you to try to make your inhale the same length as your exhale. can really surprise us what just little bits of encouragement and just a little bit of exploration on our process can do to motivate us to keep us moving in the right direction for our heart's path, for being more authentic and honest with ourselves. So let's close with three breaths. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for doing your work. You make the world a better place. And um, I will be sharing some different tools, uh, visual tools, movement tools, breathing tools, all the different things that go under the umbrella of mind, body, and heart. And um, I always welcome your feedback and I wanna hear more about what's going on in your lives. And so um, stay in kinship, stay in flow, um, stay in touch. Much love. See you at AndreaBolliniArt.com next time. Go get it.